Good evening. Welcome to Skerritt Bennett Poets Corner. This evening, our fe featured poet is Amy Huskins, and we are delighted to have her here. We've been visiting a, a little bit and um, just excited that we have this evening to share with you, whether you're here in person or virtually joining us. Amy is a poet and a visual artist with disabilities who comes from her home in South Nashville. You're with, um, and she also has hosted, well, she's done many different things. I'm gonna bring just a little bit of that in. Um, she conducted a spoken word immersion program funded by the Nashville Metro Arts and also has helped a local nonprofit Connection Americas. Um, Hoskins has hosted on all languages poetry open mic. Oh, what fun that must be. Um, all languages are welcome. Open mic moved to Flat Rock, Coffee, Tea, and More, which is located on Nolansville Pike. It's held once um, was held monthly from June 2017 to June 2018. And since then, Hoskins has hosted a monthly Gestalt Poetry Open Mic, which is virtual for now. She has 11 published poems in the United States and one in Amsterdam. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much, Donna. And thank you to Joyce Soul and to Scarrett Bennett Center for having me here. I feel really blessed and honored to be here. And thank you for everyone who's here, as well as all those who are joining us virtually tonight. And thank you for listening to my stories. These are all really stories in a way coming from various aspects, right? And I have to drink a lot of water, so there will be water breaks. <laughs> okay, this first one is a, a rather new one. It's called Shall We Dance? You're safe at home from work. Hot biscuits with butter, listening inside to the heavy rain. I feel like Bukowski in my bathrobe, trying to make a day come about. Depression, lack of motivation, energy. The sun is bright after so much rain. Welcome, but I still know more is on the way. Impending doom. I'm angry deep down, can't express it. The brightness in me dissociates, a peaceful place, anger at bay. I sow seeds. I know it's too soon, but I look anyway, waiting for second sets of leaves. I'm spreading magic in the garden that is yet to be, flowers, tomatoes, peppers. I long to feed bees and butterflies of all kinds. Can hardly wait to see them, Bodleia, coneflower, poppy. The garden brings joy, excitement. What will it be like today? Birds croak outside. I agree. So depres depression can be balanced. Joy, too, by the sense of impending doom. I still have hope anyway. It's a dance of sorts I do each day. The darkness beckons. I try to lift its spirits. It reminds me of mortality. And so it goes. And how are you? I suspect you do a dance as well of your own, shall we? This is a one that I wrote from going back and forth on Dickerson Pike, lots and lots, and just noting what's going on, so it's kind of an observational one. Progress for some. Pearl sticker on Spring Street in Dickerson Pike. A man hunched over his car, needing a new tire. Maybe that tire wipes him out financially. Maybe he feels that ache in the heart, weary of history repeating, shot after shot, knee on his neck. Not literally, but he screams inside. Can't breathe in this so-called society. The bus stop across from Walmart Berry Hill is life-threatening. You have to go. This is. Very home, not there. <laughs> you have to cross four speeding lanes to get across the street to the bus stop. A green strip of grass, no sidewalk, just a bus stop sign and a very steep hill. 
the homeless beg at stoplights. It's all they've got, distraught. I can give them love and namaste. They nod and give one back. I remember them and they remember me. Even on gray days, flags wave like 10 soldiers for the USA and Tennessee at car lots along Dickerson Pike. Driving along, it feels and breathes as though I'm living in a small town with all the elements. Multiple trailer parks, land suddenly for sale, last chance liquor's gone out of business now. Remnants of an old restaurant, produce stand, and pickets fireworks behind the big white house now covered in graffiti. The road is pop-marked and waits for a new job core infrastructure plan. Everyone and everything seems to be waiting for something else, for the bus, the change that is bound to come. We hope, progress. Where would the tornadoes take us waiting in the trailer parks? Wild roses and delightful names for streets are misnomers pointing to ancient ideology the home, we are home, waiting for that squeaky wheel to kick in. Meanwhile, look out for people walking alongside the road without sidewalks. Ambulances and fire trucks mean you stop and let them squeal past. All the elements are here, the makings and magic of progress. Otherwise, the Wild West will envelop Dickerson Pike. One day it might look like progress for some, if not for the people here now, where did they go? All along the road, so many stories untold. This is when I wrote during our big snowstorm this year. So it was February 17th. Bargain with wildness. A brotherhood of winter birds acclimate above the snow at the feeder we can barely keep full. Gentle mother's white blanket has touched us all with a new silence. Comfort inside, terror and chills without, the wild survive somehow. A new gunshot across the street at Shoot Park. Just one shot this time. I run to the window, see nothing except snow. Two men leaving each other. One still, one running, no bodies, no blood to show. A return to innocence, appearances for now. Inside out, I'm irritable after days being snowbound, four inches more on the way tonight. The silence is thick, light is blinding from the sun. Two nights ago at dusk, and light fluffy snow falling, giggles and laughter from kids enjoying their first snow in the deep dark, videos, selfies, multiple gunshots a block away. The laughter stops, resumes with a peculiar humor at the absurdity of life and death on a hair trigger, and then they are gone. More snow on the way, the thick blue comforter spares us all night. Space heater, door closed to steward the heat. The rest of the house left to the struggling HVAC already in auxiliary mode. We have power, heat, food, friends in our bubble, fireplace with fire and breakfast casserole to share. We disregard the bullet holes only to find joy and closeness, proximity to the frailty. Life is precious, absurd, glorious, and fleeting depending on where you are and who you are. For now, the snow gives the semblance of equal grace. It melts with rain next week. A brotherhood of birds at the feeder. We keep our bargain with wildness. <laughs> I see you snapping. <laughs> That's fun. Okay, this one's called Street. It's when I first moved into our neighborhood. And then there's more. Street. Beautiful street we live on it. We live on. We share a beat. Heartbeat, bus beat, beat of the feet on pavement, on grass, on music, on clouds, sun, rain, moon, sky. 
We are in the weather, rain or shine. Colors lifting us up, thump, thump. The bass line's trigger hits as mystery in the shadows. It's all right between us. We share a beat, a wave, a nod. Hello, a genuine sympathy. Walking compassion. Practice is a way of life on any street, anywhere in the world, anymore. Hello, look us in the eye. We share a heart, beat. Okay, I wrote this one a couple weeks ago. It's called the engine test. At first it sounds like a tank coming down our street, but no, the street sweeper comes and goes. All the good engines, all the good men and women made their worlds on top of the planet. Good hands, backbones, built all of that you see and more, but they thought the world was endless. Now we know laws of diminishing returns, scarcity, a planet in need of much healing, as are we. You put a blank screen over your eyes, avoiding mine, shielding yourself from whatever scares you, dares you. I had the same blank eyes growing up at times. I had to avoid critical mama's eyes each day, some kind of internal cavern where I learned to be. Now they spark with joy, laughter, and warm love. I didn't learn from you, but teachers, lovers, friends. Never knew how to be a friend till lately. Listening board, true Amiga now. I'm back to me. Amy is my namesake. Lost orphan girl with sad eyes. Many follow me inside. I'm a friend to them now too. Still not where I need to feel peace a thrumming of joyful heart and love. Instead, I do know the cavern life. I'm in a dark place deep down all the time. It's warm, safe, familiar. The trash men come and take the trash and recycling. So many essentials are done each day by women and men. Don't forget who picks your fruit, vegetables. Where we come from is a past haunted by thousands of years of a strange competition of arms, history full of weapons over people, wars. We are at the cusp of change, progress, human-based, but profoundly environmental, compassion and justice prized and rare. I believe in equality and in international human and civil rights, wrenching, to watch people suffer the opposite. Leaders we hope will lead with love and light, let us down as years go by and the pendulum swings or truly lead us on a path that is loving. We can vote and hope. Meanwhile, the earth is spinning with us, pulled to it each day, pulls on us, beautiful beyond art, abundant, fragile, ferocious nature, a separate system engine on its own, best when nurtured and left alone. We are animals at our best. Humans can be the worst. We know this is only a test of our very humanity. This is when I wrote when I was living in Washington, D.C. Two ideals, see-through world, walking on this hallowed grass. I wonder if Jefferson wanders beside us, his spirit ghostless, homeless, now they've gone so very far. Coming soon, the hall of irony. The expectant family huddled in the taxi, they've come to look for the history of ideals in the sculpture town, where the flags are always at half-mast, for the homeless vets who wander this grass with me in desert and jungle camouflage, asking for the time. Inside one of these marbles, I found the abstracts. Jackson Pollock found one face out of two lovers splattered and twined on black and peach. On my way back out to the car, through the revolving doors, I'm greeted. Ain't nothing beat the sky. Okay. I wrote 
wrote this a couple of years ago when things just seemed to be blowing up everywhere. And like it, they still kind of are, but it was really affecting me. This one's called Inside Out. I am John Coltrane, Mingus, Thelonious Monk, Miles, African American somehow, although I am so very white. Irish, English, Scottish, I am Bangladesh when it floods. I am Kuala Lumpur, Bhutan, India during the monsoon season. I am Nigeria, Somalia with a car bomb going off suddenly outside a luxury hotel. I am not ISIS, the terrorist group. I am Isis, the Egyptian goddess with dark eyeliner. I am the dark without killing, seeing in the dark without letting it win, nonviolence in the face of violence, deep inside the volcano, somewhere numb in shock on some godforsaken floor. I am Hawaii, aloha. I am the fire goddess Pele, erupting with anger when it comes. Southern lady that I am, not allowing it otherwise, beneath my mask of eternal politeness. The semblance somehow that everything is still okay. Erupting instead, rage at my enemies, blind lava burning existence itself, not understanding anymore. Why is there bloodshed, random violence, when there can be peace? in 2017, some kind of dream. The volcano survives in me, a deep ghost within. I'm a storm of violent eruptions beneath the calm mask. Baton Rouge, Washington, D.C., inside the Beltway, Baltimore, Ohio, outside the Beltway, Louisiana, New Orleans when it floods. It could be anywhere. It's everywhere now. Forest fires near Los Angeles, going up the coast in the national parks. I am there. I am the trash in the oceans. I am the whales and the starfish. I'm anything I want to be, positive or negative, light or dark, anywhere around the world, trying on perspectives to understand the truth, enormous puzzle of the world. I am a Buddhist. I am everyone all the time a drop of time in a human being, now frame of bones, set here in motion for whatever reason. <laughs> I see peace as an option, love as a possibility in a world that is good and bad. I see through the volcano in myself after long self-reflection. Peace is possible in me, in you. I am somehow love, I am peace. The world is peace. The world is love. Love is possible between all of us, somehow. As I find peace inside, a healing journey amid this chaos of terror and goodness every day, may you also love yourself. May you also find you are worthy of love. For in this way, we build a world of love, of peace, inside out. Okay, this is from college. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> Polari Actually, this was published in my, my college's uh, writer's journal. Polarity. One, the books open themselves for you. A glass of wine at your bedside as is your nighttime habit. The cat kneading your stomach muscles. It needs you. You push it away eventually in your way. The poem is by Edna St. Vincent Millay. What face do you give your past? What label are you pinning to my brow? A number on my pillow? An empty glass? Two. Edge. Cliff of silence. And I, with my minutes, my hours, my months, the earth poised. What is this woman? What is this scream, this terrible smile, this swallowing, accepting softness, 
express invisible rhythm that bonds? What is this man of dark, unclouded brow, money and possession, love and cigarettes, externalized? How can he help but be soft on the inside, a lead balloon full of wine, aging well? Three. Over the cliff, my eyes fall, but not me. There is a balance of powers here, innate, river and earth, or some other two things. In time, worn down, the boundaries clear, jagged, eroding with the wind, the breath of change. Because so I wrote this after watching a movie and driving home. Reflections on Joanna Dart de Mongolia, driving from the movie. Floating along the four-lane late night and homeward, music and monotony in my skull. Mongolian nomads raced long horses as grasses grew back before them. Brilliant-hued silks bursting through the wet outer subway walls. Shattering with laughter and wind and sun, cheers and whistling, amazing me into sudden movement while driving. Everything is slow as earth to sand blows quickly into deserts. Sand rushing into my eyes from their hooves and speeding, scrubbing me of sight to fill my head like an urn. I shift. The nomads cross over me now on their good horses. The princess leads the way, and they are shim shimmering silken bodies. I am their desert, near the train, where the spirit tree stands. This one has a trigger warning. This one's called, I am the dishwasher. I am the dishwasher, right now anyway. We plan to get the mechanical one soon, install it below the counter just so I'll only have to, on occasion, delicate things, you know. Washing dishes, I remember things, hear things, voices, flashes of memory, Stravinsky, Vietnam, floods of water over my hands as things become clean. I make things very clean. The water soothes me. I made the heat just right. I learned how to wash dishes from my mother and one of my older sisters growing up. In second grade, I remember it was my chore coming home after be being picked up at long last from the babysitter's house. Too much of the ether and juicy fruit. Little did I know what was going on and why it took forever for anyone to pick me up. I do my homework somehow and wait, all done, watching the black pine trees dripping in the forest outside the black window from the love seat, slipping. When I got in the car, there was always the juicy fruit, to take the taste out of my mouth or to freshen my breath. After all that, however you want to think about it, whatever it was. On the way home, the trippy classic geometries of our hometown Formal squares of Georgia homes melted through the car window. Grand oak trees stretching out toward the stars and street lights. At home, stumbling in to find my own dinner on a separate plate, everyone already had theirs together over news of the day. I never felt like eating it. The food was so cold by then. Instead, to wash the dishes, which was my chore, although I had to be encouraged to do it while the rest of the family watched TV. That was my lot, not understanding. Now that comes up in my mind when I'm washing dishes. The air alarm sounds in Nashville now at noon, first Saturday each month. Today it sounds like the fear of World War II, while my hands are soapy remembering the Cold War of a family living through the Cold War. After the siren, it warms up. Now things are different and holy as the sweet smell of fresh long grass you're cutting. Outside, the scent of fresh bubbles on my hands, cleaning everything just right for us now. I finish.
I am the dishwasher. Do you think women do not think while they are cleaning house? Children, for that matter, learning chores? All the cold wars of memory are being erased from my hands every time. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to see while I'm cleaning. This is from when I, in the 90s I was working for the Tennessee Healthcare Campaign and we had a wonderful program called ECHO, Early Child Health Outreach. And I traveled around the state for three years and wrote poems eventually. <laughs> so this one's here in Nashville though. Right on grace. Just cross a block and I'm in the minority. Fences around the children where I go. The story of hope alone and what it's going to take to turn her around. And she's just one, just another, just another. And then what about her kids? And on the way back, the woman posed with her purple visor, recording herself. The white crack house, the stairs askew. Louisiana flashes, ornaments ripped, see straight through, and where the fire lit the white to black it cries, and she's standing perfectly still in profile next door to that. The well-kept houses painted warm colors and ferns. I nod to the two young men, and they nod back and give birth to the man washing his burgundy car. What he's seen and barbs in his eyes for me no matter what I do. I cannot make it right. I forgive your hate from my white. Aware of my race, privilege of my skin, not like I forget wherever I am. And that's a good thing, Martha, with your white sail. Remember what it's like? No money for food. Ticking stomachs on the other side of town. Just hear them. White worlds apart. Just cross a block. Railroad tracks, you have no idea why I'm here. My urgency to make it right. It doesn't matter, I'm white. I accept. Some stray silver bullet take me out. Just another, you face it every day and night. I'll be back to help. Myrtle, right on grace. And this is when I went back to, that was like looking in the neighborhood and then I went back the next day and this is what happened. Grace M. Eaton and Belmont, one. The drive straight in is blocked off with wooden beams. You have to park in the glass on the street. On the way in, the toddlers light up when I smile at them. One reaches out to take my hand at the water fountain. My soul is brightened. I don't ever want him to let go and the adult leaving me leads me on to let go. The older children get close to me but don't always answer when I speak. The adults and I are different. We're warm and shy, warm and shy, working through our new society. She hears the helicopter, says she wonders who died. They're looking for somebody on that bridge, you know it. He says, did you hear about, I gotta go, she says. But she stays, and he says, yeah, I heard. At first, I didn't know who they were talking about because we all knew him as Peter Rabbit. We can't make it to 30, he says. That's what they say. And we're all shaking our heads. When we talk politics, waiting for the others, she says, remember us. And I say, we're fighting for you out there. We do remember you. Do I do enough? He touches my arm on the way out, and I know it's good I came. Good, I'll be back again. I know. Two. How green it is blocks away. How quiet and green. Romaine and organic olive oil on, sa on sale at Sunshine and the Freedom First bumper sticker on a white truck means the freedom to carry guns, and that's about it. And on the way home, I see a whole white family out walking slow with one in the stroller, one in white diapers, and that child's free hand is just as light as the others across town. But the adults so calm, 
walking and talking, driving by in my car and listening to us three. The white couple turns and looks at me. Just another brother on lockdown, he sings, and they're afraid of me. It's the beat, it's the beat. I do remember you sinking into this green, into this pulse. Do I do enough? This is a college poem. Inheritance. Crescent moon claw. Brooch in thinning black velvet sky. Grandmother's pearl sits glowing soft inside a drawer back home. Street bulb eclipses all but a highway, winding wingless, asphalt flat cold and blunt-edged hand without thinking fingers, without the clutch of time ache. At night on a road where lights are few, the radio off, windows down, silence in motion, the, the breath of speed. Space, give it back, cautious as a sage, paintbrush and essence free and loose of us, and back and forth, the pulling, acceleration into the curve, watch you do, you don't take curves of chance and change to helter-skelter, break you into bits and billions where you are not. Came, grandmother's moon, grandfather's highway, streetlights string the fate. This one was published, I wrote it in 1988, and it was published in 2001, so it's okay, you can wait. <laughs> this one's called The Way the Road sound Sounds When It's Wet. Like the side of your face in the dark, the back of your hand again and again against the what for and why anymore wall, white, that greasiness of the street, and tread of tires black clinging, feel of your chest against my belly reappearing like a moon, reappearing, revealing, rebounding with silence, magnetized, rubbing of opposites. Pins from mama's sewing box as a child scientific, forcing the polarity, coaxing disharmony from tiny steel points. Gravity pulling them apart at the place where pinpoints match and fall into her lap lightly. Tires screeching, hold my thought to the road. Slick rain flowing thin contours of your darkest faces. Blink them away. Gone my face off of yours to whisper sleep like the back of your fist falls from the wall to your side like magnets pulling a dream fragment of the way the road sounds when it's wet. Okay, good. <laughs> good. This one is also from college. Actually, no, from 1993. Moonbone, <laughs> we can laugh. Moonbone. <laughs> Water turned your face to stone, smooth and round as creek bed rocks. One of these beads filled the palm of my hand with white weight. I believe it was your mouth, threaded onto a black leather strip. Gave it to a little girl with silver eyes. What is it made of? Where did it come from? Bone, normally a hollow substance and light, has become calcified over time. I found it in the water. Should have told her it was a piece of the moon. Your face was always so round and bright as that. Warning, I have a trigger warning in this one. This one's called The Question of the Egg. He took the egg, but sorry, <laughs> let me try to start again. The Question of the Egg. 
He took the egg, rubbed it between his hands until the shell was gone. Then I was exposed. Maybe I grew around what was left until the shape of the egg was lost in folds of my heart tissue. Or maybe it drifted in my bloodstream like a lost craft, a broken plane. Did it evaporate in the confusion of the heat of that summer? Disintegrate and become part of the invisible everything where dead leaves and grandparents go? Unlike you, who can put the tapes on a race. I am haunted by the ghost of a small unborn bird, wildly shadowing me, pecking, chirping, telling me maybe it could have flown. Weak. She eats flowers on Tuesdays, blue ones, otherwise she doesn't care. Her eyes turn blue, flown away the petals, sparks from her tongue. She wakes up late Wednesdays and of course years wondering where she has dreamed and where she was real. Asleep in her screams, tears the sheets of paper from her dandelion body without a wish. Thursdays, she reads the sky winds, listens to all clouds, nibbling on her fingers like a squirrel who knows the storm, scatters up her mind to look across and down, up without ground. The petals are so dry by Friday, and on curbs and corners, she sells them as feathers to tourists, to whom everything quaint has a price. And she dance, and she dance, and dance until she floats. Saturday, her lover haunts her past, but doesn't find her diamonds, and her breasts, they bud for him, and she swell and bloom with blood. Sundays, all is dream of youth, and maybe her fruit thrive and fall into their mouth with truth. The ice of Monday chills her through to sap. Before they leave, they burn the harvest remaining, and he leave her writhing with loss. In the flame of his mouths, the vision smelted into blade for the pruning of her death, counter of her cycle. <laughs> okay, this is a fun one. We need a fun one. <laughs> okay, this one's called The Honey Thread. And it's tricky. <laughs> okay, melt mouth, musk mouth, Mexicus. Basil kiss, mince kiss, abstract kiss, creamsicle, lip hickey, it kisses fate, unknown random other, opposite of hate, I'm biting into your random candies, I'll eat cheesecake with you anytime, I'm flying into you for shelter, you are the wilderness for my wild dove, I am the dove to your wild church, nestle into your neck, bury my face into your hands and find my nest, my home, my wilderness preserve until it's safe to play again, safe for you, safe for my old impulse rages. We find peaceful places in our hearts, peaceful, playful, passion places to explore as is, as is, without words, you are the sand in my shell, a patient heart making pearl in the midst of my stormy mass, slalom, jetsam, gypsum, basalt, the slow rhythm drumming a wild heart. I am the sand, and you the slow wave, washing up bubbling laces, waves of pearl, waves of shell. I'm diving deep into your mouth, exploring your ocean, the ocean we are making, melting me to honey thread, the thread from me to you, the link between the engine and that slow Memphis train, between the core of me and your ember, the purple trail of your mouth on me, the purple flood, the honey trail, dream sweet into that dark soft candy, go deep into that dark softly, 
dream slowly into this dizzy spin. Dovetail, even song, dove coat, dove spin. A dangerous journey into the deep end. The rope that holds us to the ship, the same other combining second skins, winded, we're floating in warm waves we've made into an absolute joyous calm. You're holding me, I'm holding you, and a honey sea love rocking it, what we found. I told you it was fun. <laughs> okay, this is a nature boy. Field and pond. Fresh egg embryo sun. A pale yellow morning chases squirrels chasing each other around the scratchy pines. Tiny drops clear heavens bloom, showing dome spectrums. Every wildflower small and pink, yellow and tall plume waving, golden tips, wild grasses fill a field. Blue bachelor's buttons, cool stars. Horseflies not yet risen above them. Tick ticking birds ring the field from their trees and the morning dove, infrequent and shy. The spider leaving, weaving silver fine threads, the path through to the pond, walking through webs in the woods, green stained glass leaves. The dock we all sat on, talked late at night, swam to cut the heat, floated, fish nibbling our legs and toes, concentric light rain circles, water bugs skating, crickets sustaining time. Now we have audience choice. We have audience choice, I have two poems left. One is called Down to New Orleans. Another one is called The Farm, and it's almost a short story, but it's short. But it's about where my father grew up. So you guys can choose The Farm or Down to New Orleans. Down to New Orleans it is. I'll do both. I'll do both. Okay. <laughs> Left the time. This is the last one. Okay. There is a slight bit of language in this one, but it's just at the beginning and then it's done. You'll understand. Okay. Down to New Orleans. They painted the factory turquoise to put a slight soft on the edge of working their everyday shifts. Trucks rule here. Snub-nosed essentials. Get off my ass. Get off my ass. Am I driving safely? Number scratched out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tall stacks of former trees now lumber, steaming, hosed down so they won't burn. Scrublands where forests were with tiny rows of pines reforesting. They cut them down and grow them back over and over again. When we entered Mississippi, there was a magnolia on the sign. We saw six planted. They planted magnolias and a crepe myrtle on the places that they've shaved, making it nice like. And even so, I'm glad for that. One volunteer magnolia and two men were measuring it with orange tape. Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, Slidell, long green corridor for miles of pine. Intermittent swaps in big and little muddies, some happy alligators, Pearl, Rub Pearl River scuttlebutt, lank part chore train, and six pelicans bent winged in the wind. Bayou Sauvage and the highway is buckling with moisture underneath. Louis Armstrong is singing to a very different landscape, even though in places it looks the same, feels the same, ghosts for hours at a time. It holds the very wind of hope. What do they do around here for that? All along the way every day, what do they do for hope? A quiet place in the quarter subtropic, bottle the sound of that train, that steamboat whistle, it holds the very wind of hope. 
each day they work and come home tired. How is it people still act like high school and power tripping for the money, for the job, for the payday, overtime, venting box, TV escape? I'm touching all the places where they feel warm, again at home and with friends, and start all over again tomorrow. The kids all wondering where their lives are. Is it here or somewhere else one day? Here in this one small space of streets, there is a dedicated aesthetic, Vieux Carré, where they have to hose down the streets each night for vomit and despair. Escape that was found steams off the bricks, but the smell is harder to chase down. It sticks in the very air. The hanging plants there are plastic hurricanes. The beads are decaying on the iron. People come and they do find fun and escape. Love acts here means anonymous sex if you're planning to watch or perform. But here, love, acts of love are live. Frothy green and erotic shades of comfort with comatose men stumbling their way through. The tourists and natives seeking coffee and pastries. We're sucking it up. We suck up planned beauty. Rows of windows full of art and light and chandeliers, gothic antiques. Avoid the where you come from, quick change men. The saxophonist and the quartets all inject beauty from their stoops into the very air and it lofts to the market, to the persimmons and the strung red peppers, bottles of spice and voodoo kits and the water calls into it, shifting its own ghosts into the mix. Lime green and hot pink boas, t-shirts and candy beads, plastic poop amulets and liquor stores, one more street down and back to quieter voices. Rows of long shuttered windows and balcony respites. This is what we recall when we are napping. This is where I stop you from our running at night from cover to cover to kiss you in the dark. The ghosts whisper up beside us and they go running down the street. This is what it's about. This kissing life art, no matter where it is, it repeats in the light between the trees, along the corridor greening up, all the way back up. This is where they find their hope. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I could see New Orleans. I could smell New Orleans. Right, right. <laughs>